Hi everybody, this is Diane. I'm working on another um, uh, cookbook journal, but this one is um, going to be a lot different from the ones that I've just done because this one is a binder and it is from 1931, I think. Let me check just to make sure. Oh, I had it somewhere here and I'm pretty sure it was 1931. It's in the early 30s anyway. Um, so it's in pretty good condition considering the age of it and uh, it is coming apart right here. The fabric is split. So I'm going to reinforce just right here. I don't really want to do anything to the cover because I love it the way it is. And this part is good. I don't know if I might put a strip of fabric here just for future safety. I'm not sure yet. But it's a really beautiful binder book. So I'm just going to show you uh, what I've gathered for it. And I've done a little bit of work on some of the pages that I'm putting in. And I've made a few embellishments with my Cricut. And I'll show you those. So first of all, I am using these large pieces that came out of an actual vintage um, scrapbook. The rest of the pieces that were in this batch of stuff that I got were Victorian. So I don't know if these are Victorian, but they could be Victorian era. So I stamped this label stamp in green ink and put that up there for your book plate. And then I added this piece here. I just love the colors with the colors of this book. And I thought they just have to go in here. I'm going to put this tomato piece over here. It's got a spot right here that's not very pretty. So I found this little printable. I think this is from Nevermore Creation 17. If I recall correctly, it's a little button card. And this, and they all have a little different saying. And this one says happy ending. And the colors are perfect. So it's at the end of the book. So I'm going to just put this little strip right there. Let's take care of that. And we'll take care of the reinforcing the binding. I'm just looking for my, there it is, I put it away for a change, my vintage photo ink. Um, I don't reserve journals. I used to do that, um, but it got to the point where I wasn't able to just put any in my shop. Um, they were all reserved. So then I started reserving some, but not all, and that just got confusing. So I just say I don't reserve journals. But I really, really appreciate the fact that you guys are interested enough to ask me about it because that means you guys like my journals. And you guys just don't have any idea how much that means to me. I was thinking about that um, yesterday when I was getting those um, the cookbook journals I just sold, um, getting them weighed and ready to put in the shop. And I knew people were already interested in them. And I do not take that for granted at all. I am so appreciative of it. It allows me to do something that I love and get some income from it. Because if I just kept doing these, making these journals, which I like to do, I wouldn't have space for everything <laughs> and I wouldn't be making them. So. I just really appreciate you guys snapping up my journals as quickly as you do. The um, pages are only going to be six inches wide, so these pieces would have been too small to fit on even the divider pages. So that's why I, use, I put them on the cover, and I think that they just really I think it's a fun element to open the book to and to close the book with. 
I have some feed sack fabric here that I'm going to put on this edge. want it to cover up the spine and I don't want to cover up this. I'll use my pinking shears to cut the other edge. Actually, I think I will glue that on um, off camera because I want to be able to open the clo and close the book to finish making this video. But this will be added, and I don't know if I'll add another little piece or two of feed sack fabric just to, you know, be a little more decorative. But I don't want to cover any more of the cover. set that aside and I'll glue that on later. I also wanted to show you this binder that I have. I got this at a flea market several years ago and as I was looking at my binders to, to choose one to make, I have several that are not um, the five ring binders. This is Better Homes and Gardens but it is three ring so this is before they started making the five ring binders. So I have several um, binder cookbooks that are very interesting some and I think I think most of the ones that I have are the ones that you would write your own recipes in and I think that's what this is pretty much but I did not realize until I was just looking at them the other day that this was not the original cookbook binder it's just a loose leaf binder um, so somebody had this Better Homes and Gardens Lifetime cookbook which is different from this one and there was no um, uh, copyright date on it. So I don't know how old this is. Um, I'm pretty sure it's about the same era as that one. It seems like it anyway. Um, anyway, they must have had a binder that came apart or something and they bought this binder to put it in. But they also did some doctoring up it's not in bad condition and I don't think the tabs are in bad shape but I think this was preventative medicine they took these linen and plastic and paper tabs and typed the name of the section and it, um, adhered those tabs to these binder dividers isn't that cool and then there's, um, there are some recipes, but not a whole lot for each section. And then there were pages. And I don't know if the owner of the book added the pages or if they came with the binder. Um, they're just regular three, three ring binder pages, but they're vintage. So there's a whole pile of them. I took some of them from here and I'm going to add them into the book I'm working on. <clears throat> but this has directions on how to use this, how to make it a lifetime cookbook. So I thought that was fun. So I'm not going to do anything with this right now, um, but when I do, I don't think this is going to be a cookbook journal. I think it's just going to be a fun uh, binder journal with some other theme or no theme. I just wanted to show you that. Um, I have this piece, the cardboard piece. I think there were two. I think there was one in the front and the back, and they're kind of bent. And so I don't know if I'm going to replace them. I had a piece of plastic. don't know what I did with it. Um, 
Yeah, I had a piece of heavy plastic. Actually, some of my Tim Holtz stamps. I think they're right here. These, my Tim Holtz stamps came on these. So they're not quite long enough. I was thinking of replacing this with this plastic. I'll have to look for some plastic. It's big enough to fit through the rings, but just barely. So I don't know. I just, I do want to, I might keep these, but reinforce them with something. I could probably put the plastic just on this where the holes are, and then I think that would work. Okay, so I'll do that with the two pieces to help reinforce the pages so they don't get warped. Um, I pulled out some photo sleeves, and I can't believe I forgot to add any of these to the cookbook journals I just made. These are some of the bigger ones that I have. So I'll add some of those to this book. This pretty envelope with the eyelet flap I might use. Pulled some game sheets to stick in there. Um, I had set aside some bigger pieces that I couldn't use in the other cookbooks, like maybe these I can use. Those are digitals. And some of the... This one wasn't too big to be used in the other journals, but I had used enough of them. So I saved that for this one. I just have quite a pile of stuff here as I'm getting my stuff organized. Oh, I think they're here. These two were these were too big to put in my other journals. So I could do something with them. Whether I just make them a card that's bound in or make them into a pocket or something. But I have those. So let me show you what I made with my Cricut. Oh, I have all these phrases and things that I cut from magazines and um, cookbooks. So I want to use some of them. I have a cartridge for my Cricut called Suburbia and it has a lot of fun images. These I won't use in the recipe books but while I had that cartridge in and making things I went ahead and made those to put in my stash. These, these two would be fun maybe on opposite pages in a journal because they're both on the phone. So maybe they're talking to each other. But I have a mixer. There might be a piece I'm supposed to put on there that I lost somewhere. So I might have I'll have to look and see. If I have to re recut that, it'll recut all the black pieces, but that's okay. This is a refrigerator. Um, some ladies in aprons. This is the same. <laughs> lady. I just <clears throat> cut them opposite in color. Lady with a pie, a lady with her shopping list, I think. It's a casserole, an oven, and a toaster that I cut out. That's from the Suburbia cartridge. I also have another cartridge called From My Kitchen, which I didn't have time to make anything with, and I probably won't because I think I have enough. I have these sacks. I've uh, I think two sacks that I pulled out and I have my We Are Memory Keepers little punch all lined up. Unfortunately they didn't make it big enough to do more than two holes. I have five of these pieces but it, you'd have to cram them all together but I line it up punch two holes and then line this hole up with this one so that I know this one will be in the right place. And sometimes it doesn't want to pop back up. With heavier things there must be this glassine is a problem. This already had the hole punched in it when I moved it down there. I haven't had this much trouble today with it. Usually I just pull it up and it releases, but it's not releasing. I 
and try dropping it. Nope. All right, so that's out of commission for now. Um, I'll just put another <laughs> another one in here. That's a little frustrating. I'll line this one up there. That hole is lined up with that. So I'll put this one in, lining up with this hole. I have some larger index card dividers that are very thick and heavy, so I punched holes in them. I'm going to go ahead and punch this card or envelope. I think just doing two holes in this is enough. Oh, but I didn't want to do them in the center like that. I mean, I thought I did, but I wasn't thinking properly. Because that's too high up, and that would be too far down. So I'll do something different with that. That was a mistake. I have these two last pieces of this wallpaper border, so they'll go in here, maybe. That's the last of my wallpaper border with the recipes. I have some of the pages and all of the dividers. I think I used all, I'm using all of the dividers. I'm not sure. Depends on how much I decorate and how fat the book gets. Um, but I started adding some of um, some decorations or pockets to the dividers or some of the pages. So this is a vellum, a vellum, <laughs> chenille pocket. And I just put this section of Hershey recipes in here. have some scrapbook paper. I'm using up not all of the pieces. I still have a few pieces left of this saucy collection because I had two saucy collections to use and I've been using it in all of these cookbook journals. Um, this one is going to not be, not stay right here because it would be two chenille pockets right close to each other. This is part of the book. It came with this book. It said, use this envelope to hold recipes and food information you obtain from Better Homes and Gardens food manufacturers, and other sources. Recipes should be filed and indexed regularly each month. So you put them in there, but make sure you take them out and file them every month. I glued on uh, an image from a vintage apron pattern. This was inside the envelope. So you can order, um, give it to your friends so that they can order their own copy. I put a book of green stamps in there and a handwritten recipe. I put in this coupon shopping list envelope and I added a whole bunch of stuff inside that. This is from a magazine, one of the ones that I just got, not today, but last week, the ones that um, I, from the batch that I already sold. So I'm going to make a tag to put in there. I glued this so it's going to have to be kind of a not a really not a really wide tag because the glue smushed out but I love this. I put in some pages from another recipe book. Um, I figured I would this would be a good way to use this Mendit's card. I got this earlier this year and it is little metal discs that you screw into the bottom of your pan or the side of your pan or wherever you have a hole in your pan. Mends all leaks instantly. So I just punched a couple holes and I'll include that. I have this calendar from 1960. Unfortunately, I punched a hole right where it said 1960. This is from a magazine from the 1930s, I believe, and I love this image. It was a full page image, um, and she's making cornbread. So there's a canister of cornmeal right there. I just trimmed it down to fit into the book and backed it with some Prima ledger paper cardstock. 
and I have the larger recipe cards that I couldn't fit into the other books so I'll be using some of them. This one opens up but you, it's perforated so you can split it apart and move it around if you want to. This is a fun thing that I got out of one of my vintage magazines. I may be cute but I'm not impractical and I just thought she was adorable so I glued her on there. Apparently I want to put a pocket here to put her in because <laughs> it says canning and preserving so I put this tag that says eat your vegetables here. So I'll, I'll make a pocket for that. And there's another big tag. So I've got some papers cut. I made a pocket and added a milk bottle cap there and put my 7-Up tag that everybody liked and said, yes, put it in a cookbook. Because there is a recipe for 7-Up um, cake, apparently. Oh, here's the other piece. That's the front piece. So, that's about where I'm at. I'm just, I've just been pulling stuff and doing a little bit of work. Um, so, rather than try to figure out right now how I'm going to fit everything in here, like what order it's going to go in, I think I will just start adding things to my pages and dividers like I want to. Um, Alright, let's start with these things. We'll do some of these. I want to have at least two ladies and two appliances in here. The rest can be set aside <coughs> for another cookbook journal sometime. Now these are not in order. I've got lots of scrapbook pages cut. I don't know if I'll use them all. I didn't punch holes in all of them just in case because um, I have a five ring binder too. So. I might want to use some of those pages in five ring binders. This is um, the recipes that I had cut from a flower bag. I didn't know if I was going to use it as a pocket or a card, journal card, but obviously I put it on as a pocket. And I have this piece from an ap apron pattern that I tucked in there. don't know what I'll put in there yet. So this page, I was thinking about using this little jingle, Everything's Better, with Blue Bonnet on it. But I didn't know what kind of a picture to put on it. And now I don't have the word bonnet. Oh, here it is. So I think I bought uh, some 1930s and 40s magazines today at the flea market. Good housekeeping. So I think I will look through them and see if there's a blue bonnet ad that I can put on here. Otherwise, I don't know, maybe I could just put one of these ladies. We'll see. I'm going to set this in a safe place until I know exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, let's do something with this page. I'm going to send um, all of the remaining pages. Now these books don't come with a lot of recipe pages because I think you were supposed to fill in with your own. There were some <clears throat> blank pages at the back, which I'm including a few of those in the book, but I'm going to just send all of these pages with whoever buy, for whoever buys this journal. If you want me to, it adds to the weight to add the pages, of course.
I want her to have her hand on something, not just hovering in the air. I can make her a little pocket. so I can cut off where I punched those tabs. And that should give us the right width. You wouldn't be able to read the whole recipe, but at least you'd get some of the uh, vintage handwriting on these recipe cards. If I added a card. If I have to do any sewing, I'm not going to do it in this video. I had it so that her feet were at the bottom of the pocket. There, that's better. that writing for the butter horns. So I think I will sew this recipe to this pocket and then maybe sew the pocket on too. And not sure if I'm going to glue her down so that the pocket is only this wide or if I'll leave her loose. She is doubled. I cut her in green and then when you cut the black portion it cuts it out in two pieces for this one. They're different. Each one varies. So the top part of her is doubled. Okay, so I'm going to paper clip this all together so I remember what I'm doing with it, hopefully. <laughs> I'll put it over by my sewing machine. I like the dividers because they have the lines. Now that was for you to write down uh, the names of the recipes that you included in your book. So that makes a great journaling place. Okay, these are all the original pages. That's a big card. My 
Cricut didn't cut that last flower out very well, so I might have to add an embellishment here. That certainly is too big for that. I think I like this, though, on this paper. I just have to put a smaller tuck in. Like that. This one has a recipe on the front. This had holes in it, but they didn't match up with the holes. So I glued that strip on there and then repunched holes. I'm not going to do anything with the line pages yet. I might add some images from vintage magazines onto those pages at some point. That is a recipe for beads, cornstarch, salt, and water. So I have a handwritten and a typed card there. I have two ladies, and um, the casserole dish isn't a appliance, but let's say I want to use two ladies and two kitchen items. It's a nice big one, but I still think this would not fit in there. I think maybe I will just paper clip this to a page with one of my... Oh, I wonder what I did with that. Here they are. I'll find a page to add that to. Maybe I want the decorative part on the back side of the page so it doesn't compete with that. So I will glue this here, and I'll have to come up with something to put inside that pocket. And then I'll distribute all of those these Cricut images throughout the journal more evenly than they are distributed right now. recipe card in here. This came out of an old recipe book and it's got something glued and something paper clipped. going to be adding um, bits of fabric and stuff. I'll be doing some sewing on these pages and I want to make sure I get some of these big recipe cards. I've got all kinds of big recipe cards. These have holes in them so I'll either punch the holes on the opposite side or I'll have to 
I think I will just punch them on the opposite side because if I keep adding to the edges of the pages it'll just make it really bulky. I want to get a variety of cards in there. Got these big ones. So I won't use all of those, but I'll use some. Oh, what's this? So I think I have plenty here. I'm going to have to remove some of it, I'm sure. Oh, here's the rest of my big recipe cards. I guess I'm going to have to sell bundles of the big recipe cards. I think I should put one of these divider things in. I think I have some of these items already pulled. items from these boxes already pulled. Okay. Then I have my uh, vintage magazine images to go through. I had some large images and these pages are six inches so that's not a whole lot wider than the books that I just made but it is a little wider so some of those bigger images I might be able to use. Oh, I had this card too. I wonder if that's too big. Let me see. No, it is not, because I'll just be cutting off the blue part. That would be fun to include in this book, right? put in maybe some pages from this book. Just I wanted to put in some from one of these paperback brochure type of books. This is actually for a Frigidaire stove. So I think that's all I'm going to do on camera today. I was gathering supplies, but also doing some crafting. But right now I need to whittle it down to what exactly is going to be in the book and then focus. I'm kind of all over the place today. So I hope that you are intrigued by what you saw today and that you'll come back to see more. Um, I don't know if I'll have any more process or if the next video will just be the flip through. But, yeah, there will be another video at least for the flip through. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.